Well, welcome back to Whippoorwill Holler, guys, and welcome back into Miss Lori's Kitchen. So this is day four of our Thanksgiving menu. The reason we're doing this is to maybe help somebody that's not put a Thanksgiving dinner on the table. This is their first time. So we're going through a several days, uh, five days of some different recipes. And even if you have put plenty of Thanksgiving dinners on the table, this might give you a new idea. But I just love helping people, and uh, I've been there, done that. I mean, being just scared to death that maybe I didn't have enough or I just didn't make the right thing or, you know, putting Thanksgiving dinner on the table can be kind of, you know, nerve-wracking sometimes. And uh, even to the most seasoned cooks, it can be nerve-wracking, believe me. But I have come, these are just simple recipes nothing hard about it they're not going to cost you an arm and a leg to make and put on the table to feed your family so today our recipe is going to be a dessert and uh, this is a pecan pie but this pecan pie does not have any corn syrup in it so and it's very very good so i want y'all stay with me and we're going to make a delicious pecan pie to put on our thanksgiving table Okay, guys, now that's just, I know a lot of people, um, they don't like putting corn syrup into their diet, and there's so many, so many recipes during the holidays that, that you know, that does use corn syrup, and I, and I use corn syrup in a lot of my candies and stuff, um, but when I seen this recipe um, a couple years ago, I thought, you know, I'm going to try this, and I did, and it's a very good pecan pie. Now I've got my uh, pie crust ready. You can either make your own, you can get store bought, whatever you want to do to make it easier on you. That's for sure. So I've got it ready. A nine inch deep dish pie pan. If you don't have a deep dish pie pan, but maybe you've got a spring form, nine inch spring form pan, you can use that. But we're gonna do is we're going to take our eggs and I've got three large eggs right here and I'm going to take my whisk and I'm going to whisk my eggs I want them to get uh, kind of frothy kind of foamy and fluffy and that might take just a little bit especially with fresh eggs I don't know how many of y'all love pecan pie, but uh, I don't think I really make pecan pie except at the holidays, and I don't understand why, because we do love it. And I love making the little pecan tarts, too. I've done that in the past for Thanksgiving. And it was, you know, I think people really liked it, too, because um, they could just pick it up, kind of like finger food, and just go with it and eat it. So you could do that with this recipe too. Instead of putting it in a deep dish pie crust, you could put it in little tarts. Make you some little tarts. Okay, now that my arm has give out, you can see how foamy it is. Now we're gonna put in our butter. And this is 3 fourths cup of melted butter, which is one and a half sticks. 
Now, if you want to take this pie a little over the top, brown your butter. Make you some brown butter. I got my butter in there. Now we're going to pour in one and a half cups of brown sugar. And some of these recipes, they never say packed or loosely, you know. And this one didn't say packed either, but I kind of packed it in there. One and a half cups of brown sugar, and I've got a half a cup of white sugar. So what I want to do is I want to stir this good, beat it real good, because I want to make sure that... Uh, it's not real grainy. Just keep a stirring. Now, I've got, let's see, I've got one and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And that's going in there. I've got a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I know people are thinking I've never put cinnamon in my pecan pie. Well, I never had either, but it works. So you don't even have to put it in there if you don't want to. Just put the half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to mix that in real good. And your mixture is going to get kind of thick. But you can see what it looks like. Now, I've got one and a half tablespoons of heavy cream. And you can see this comes together pretty fast. I'll put the recipe down in the description box. Okay, I want two teaspoons of vanilla. Something on that. Two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm going to stir that up good. Now I've got two cups of just coarsely chopped pecans here. And if you want to leave your pecans whole, you can do that too. I just, um, I have a hard time eating whole pecans, so I like to top them up a little bit at least. So we got everything in here. So now we just have to fold in our pecans. Two cups of coarsely chopped pecans. Just kind of fold them in there. I know people um, say that they have a hard time getting their pecan pies to set up. Um, you got to make sure that you leave that pie in there the correct amount of time. Don't take it out till that center doesn't jiggle. Um, I've made plenty of pecan pies that didn't set up all the way. Sometimes I think it's a hit and miss, but if you'll cook it the right amount of time, and not take it out too soon, and then just let it sit there and set up. You should be okay. Okay. That's all there is to that. I'm going to grab my pie crust. And I'm just going to pour it in here. And I got my oven set on 375. Now, you need to have some foil or a crust shield to put on your, around your crust because as long as this is going to have to cook, you don't want the sides of your crust to be all burnt. So, now, if you wanted to, 
you could have kept out a few whole pecans and sprinkled on top. But this is plenty of pecans for me, Mr. Brown. Um, if he don't <laughs> if he don't threaten to eat it tonight, I may put it in the freezer and take it out on Thanksgiving because yes, you can freeze your pies and put them, you know, just wrap them good in plastic um, wrap is what I do. And then I wrap it again with some good heavy duty aluminum foil. I put it in the freezer and they'll stay good up to Thanksgiving. I take them out and put them in the refrigerator, let them thaw out in the refrigerator. Now that's after they're cooked. So you can do that ahead of time. So we're going to put this in the oven, 375. I'm going to check it after 40 minutes and see where we're at. If it's not done like I want it to be, I'll put it on another 10 minutes. And I do have a cookie sheet in here, which I, I'm not afraid of this. Whoops. I'm not afraid of this overflowing or anything, but it does seem like sometimes when you put a cookie sheet underneath, it seems like the bottom crust seems to do really good. So, it's in the oven. 40 minutes. We'll be back when it's done. So in today's video, y'all are getting two recipes. Now, Mr. Brown and I, we love a good fruit salad. And this is an old vintage fruit salad recipe. It's ambrosia. And I know there's probably many recipes out there uh, of putting different ingredients in it. I've got all my ingredients set out here. It's going to come together really fast. And our main uh, ingredient is going to be about a half a cup of whipping cream. This is what's going to make your ambrosia just taste really special. So I've got a half a cup of whipping cream. And I've got two tablespoons of sugar. Now we're just going to take this whipping cream and sugar and we're just going to whip it till stiff peak. Okay, we got that whipped up good. Stiff peak. Kind of reminds you of meringue. Then we're going to take a half a cup of sour cream. And I'm not going to beat this with the mixer. I'm just going to kind of stir this around in my whipped cream. Kind of get it mixed up there. Now, we've got a cup of mandarin oranges. We've got a cup of grapes. And I've also got a cup of pecans. I've got one cup of pineapple tidbits and this is pineapple that I can myself so they're not all the same size. I found um, about a year ago or more I found some fresh pineapple for 99 cents a piece and I canned a bunch of them. We got a cup of sweetened coconut flakes and we've got about three cups of mini marshmallows. We're going to start to stir this.
ambrosia it is it's a really really good fruit salad if you've never had it before it's really just not too overly sweet that whipping cream and the sour cream mixed together it's just really really good This is a good fruit salad for any holiday, for sure. Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever. And I've got a jar of maraschino cherries. I didn't mean to put that juice in there. You want to make sure you drain them good. And it makes a really pretty fruit salad. You put in a real pretty bowl, sit on your table. Now once you get this stirred up, you want to put it in a container and you want to chill it for about two hours before you try to serve it. Um, I have found it best to make this the day of. If you make it the day before, it seems like the next day gets kind of watery, even when you drain everything good. So I think it's best made that day and served. So I'm going to get this in a pretty dish, and then we'll taste it. Such a pretty fruit salad. I put it in my mother-in-law's pretty dish here that was handed down. This is a wonderful, wonderful fruit salad. Y'all have got to try it.